Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode 61 of our Let's Play series, Stalingrad to Berlin. Uh, we left off just a little bit west of Smolensk here in the previous episode. We're going to continue down along our front lines and see how much progress we can make in the south. As, as you remember from the previous episode, we had a lot of success up by Riga and pushing in that direction, so... Hoping we can repeat that in the south as we look towards pressing Odessa, Kharkov, and, and those other uh, victory points. So, left off right here where we are unsuccessful because they had the Panzer Division supporting uh, the 252nd Infantry Division. As we've... A, really, this is, I think, one of the last spots in the entire front line that has stayed pretty static since the game since the scenario began, we really have not made any progress here. Um, a good part of that due to the terrain is it's just miserable terrain to work through, and we've put forces elsewhere. And looking at it, I don't see anywhere that we're going to try to push through in this sector of the front. What we are going to do, though, is keep taking these forces that had been um, brought back to deal with the panzer unit that got behind our lines is as they become available and ready, we'll take them off, refit. We'll start putting them actually on the front to be able to uh, help out with potential future offensives. Right now we're going to keep this guy... Actually, no, what we're going to do is we're going to... Let me see here. These are actually all very high combat prep already with low fatigue because they haven't been attacking anything all game, so that actually makes sense. So I guess we'll leave them there. They still have a few men to recover in their order of battle until they're ready. Back here we have reserve and refit. So they're both pretty close. Is there anything we can do there with 12? Can maybe press here, but I really don't want to press against fortification level three. I'd rather come through this side of the front if I had to choose. Let me see here. And you know, I'm going to do something else entirely. Is I'm going to take this rifle corps. And we're actually going to bring them south to help down here as we look to press. Um, going east and south towards Kursk. So where would they be most beneficial? Probably in this hex. Here you see we've actually got moderately high fatigue. This rifle division actually, we should probably take both of these, to be honest. Take them both back to be put on refit. Let's see where our depot is here. That's ah, pretty far back there. So we're just going to bring them back here. I'm going to set them both to refit. And then we'll take this rifle corps, which is part of that um, 61st Army. We're going to move them south here. And then we also have these two units that are unready. So I'm just going to take them off the front lines, because we don't need them there. And this is going to help their recovery quite a bit. Yeah, that, that's all looking much better. This is the unit that we brought down. I think what we'll do is we'll attack here. So that routed that Sturm Division. I mean, they lost 700 of their 3,000 men. That's just crushing to them. Down here, we're going to... We're going to attack with both of these. Because I had a feeling they had something that was going to be in support. So they managed to still hold even though we threw both rifle cores at them. Okay. So that's the SS Estonian Motorized Brigade. Just put you to refit. You're also on refit. Yeah, some of these units have seen quite a bit of um, battle here. So let's take you, and we're going to also set you to a refit status. 
We still have plenty in terms of defense here. All of those rifle cores are all looking fine. For here, hmm. the question is, do we want to push forward here? I think we do. I think we want to keep the pressure up on Kursk. We haven't done too much to that end lately. So let's have these guys attack south here. So that route at that mountain division. And then we can take you south. This entire stack is going to come south unless there's... Yeah, no, they're all fine, so we're going to move them all south. Then I think we will... I think we're going to... We're going to go for a two for one. I'm going to have these two stacks attack in their middle with the 304th Infantry. And I'm hoping these two can take care of this corner unit. So let's see if that works out. Okay, one of the two down. Now over here, we don't have any units that are hurting. No, we're good. So we're going to go ahead and attack there now. They also retreated. So that leaves this one unit kind of isolated as we continue our march south towards Kursk. And then, of course, we're attacking from the west as well. Over here, we're going to take these two units and attack the 4th Mountain Division. And they held. Interesting. Fortification levels are pretty high, to be fair. Okay. So we may need something a little bit more to bust through there. But that, that's going to be the point that we really want to try to leverage against to try to force the 7th Panzer and the 20th Panzer to... Uh, reposition themselves. Now if they do reposition to try to defend Kursk, hopefully that leaves a path for us to just push straight through uh, from the north. can take off my overlay on HQs. Now over here, I think the first question that we should try to figure out is how far can we push due east towards Kursk? So let's take this entire stack and attack right in the center, and that retreat at them. So that's good. And then if we take this tank core forward, let's also take the cavalry core up there with them. And back here, ooh, that rifle division we're going to put on refit, but this rifle division, the 112, thinking to bring them up and uh, have both attack here. That's only two to one odds, and I feel like we can do better than that at this point. So I think we're actually going to move you forward here. Oh, boy. You can come up here. And then let's see if we take all of you. 32 to 8, let's do it. Alright, so they retreat it. Victory, victory. Over here, I think we're just going to hold. Well, no, let's, let's press. 10 to 3, let's do it. They retreat it. There we go. So they're they're in pretty much full retreat now in and around Kursk. Question is how we manage this situation down here. Going to take this unit off of refit. Gonna set them to just ready. I'm gonna bring them over here. That rifle division now we're going to bring back, set them on refit, swap them out with these guys. A little bit of a shuffle here, that's fine. And you know, frankly, we're just going to move forward up to here, and then I'm going to take 
this rifle division to support them. And then we're going to hit the 27th Panzer, I think. Oh, but that rifle corps is not doing the greatest on supplies. Is there anything we can add to support to try to help against a Panzer division? Yes, yeah, so let's add this tank brigade. So that should help them. And then let's take both stacks and attack. That's 23 to 5. Victory. It was a pretty depleted Panzer division. They only had 28 armor. We took out a further 9. So that, that made it a little easier on us. We're now in a defensible enough position here that I'm not worried about any of that. On this side of the front... We have left just a bit of a gap here. So I think what I'm going to do is just to uh, be sure... We're actually going to bring that rifle division down there and have them be on refit. And... People wise I'm actually going to bring you over here. There we go. So I think we need to do a flip-flop here, because we have a member of the 40th Army over here when they should belong to the 60th. So let's handle that real quick. You're going to go to the 60th Army. And then I saw over here, this guy, he's going to go to the 40th. I got that wrong. I think I still want him in the 40th, though. I could put him to the front, I suppose. Mm, let's toss him to the front. Okay. I didn't toss him to the front, I did the 40th. My, my mouth said something different than my brain was thinking there. Um, and we're gonna set them to a refit status and have him go back here to his HQ. Wise, it's all the way back there, and I don't want to bring them back that far, so that's fine. Over here, we've got some units we can probably move forward. You're gonna stay on refit. You're both okay, but you're both tank cores, so if I have you attack, I think I want you to fall back if I do attack. Let's move you up here, and we're gonna bring up this rifle division, I think. And we're going to have all of you attack across. That's two to one. It's against a motorized division. Yeah, let's do it. All right. They retreated. They didn't have any armor. They were only at 5,000 men. So that probably explains a lot of it. Down here, these guys are going to attack where they're weak, which is this element of the 7th Infantry Division. Push them back quite successfully. And then we can keep moving forward the rest of our line here as we just keep pushing towards Kharkov, kind of one tile per turn. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you're fine. So, rifle brigade, bring both of you forward. You're on refit. And I think I'm just going to throw you back into the action at this point. So I'd rather have you up here and seeing if we can't push back this element of the motorized division. And we were successful there too. Excellent. Right here. Yeah, fatigue's pretty low on all those guys, so let's bring them all forward. And then let's have them continue to press. Alright, another victory. Look at that. We're, we're rocking and rolling here. And it'll just full on push straight, straight west. Let's go here. A lot of armor for that, but that's fine. I'm gonna take these units forward and let's have them attack here, 18 to 2. So they both retreat it. And then the unit that didn't attack, this 52nd Guards, gonna have them attack north here. Route at them, good. 
that just leaves this one pocket with elements of the retreated motorized division and one infantry element. Actually, I think they retreat it too, so they're probably all in a pretty poor state at this point. Let's take uh, this tank core. How are you actually doing? So you are only at 44% medium tank, 53% recon. So if I can't supplement you with a support unit, and it looks like I can. Yeah, so let's do the heavy guard tank regiment. And then... We're also going to toss in 179th anti-tank regiment as well. Let's see here. I want to... You've already moved. The rifle division I'm going to bring down there. Back here, that rifle division I'm going to take off reserve and bring up. They're on refit, that's fine. Back here we have this unit, which can come off refit. They're part of the 3rd Guards Army, so I'm going to bring them there. And then your elements of the 6th Army. So I'm actually going to have them start moving. Right up here. And we're going to press the attack there. Retreat at them. Good. So we're trying to press that line to Kharkov here. That tank core's on refit. Is that the one I was just adding elements to? No. So actually, what are they at? They're actually doing better. They're at 89% medium. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're just going to toss you back into it. So you're in a ready status. Let's bring you all the way forward here. I'm going to take this 3rd Guards Infantry, this Rifle Corps. I'm actually going to move them up here. I'm going to use them to attack right there. Okay, so there's a Light Division committed. Yeah, I still broke through. That's good. And then what if we take these two units and attack south here? Another light division. Same one, probably. They were unsuccessful in stopping us, though. These guys are going to attack south here. Ooh, so that's the 190th rifle. Wasn't enough, though. Okay. And then let's just see if we can make it a complete flush. We're going to have these guys go. Ooh, they held. Okay. They're so close to breaking through in all the areas. It's a good shot, though. Over here... I'm gonna leave them right where they're at, I think. And we're gonna start looking now at where we advance. We're starting to get kind of north of Stellino here. We've got a... bit of a hot mess of units all around here. But a lot of this was us trying to counteract the fact that we have the Wiccan SS Panzer Grenadier Division. We have the Gross Deutschland Panzer Grenadier Division. Multiple... Um, Panzer Divisions here, the 3rd Panzer Division. Uh, element of the 2nd. So I'm trying to think if we push towards the 3rd Panzer. I think we do. I think that's what we're going to try to do here. So let me just see how this tank corps is doing. They are not doing great. What can we assign to them to help? We're going to give them this heavy tank regiment and this... Anti-tank regiment. So hopefully that helps them. I think we're going to go after the big dog here with the 3rd Panzer. So let's keep gearing up for that. This rifle core already has a heavy guards. That's good. This rifle core doesn't have much, so we're going to attach this separate tank battalion. And then this rifle division. We're going to attach this 
Heavy Guards Tank Regiment. Going to be a lot of KV-1s in this fight. That's 50 to 13. Motorized Division was committed. Oh no, Gross Deutschland Panzer Grenadier Division and another Rifle Division. This is going to be one heck of a battle. Oh my goodness, look at that. They brought in everything. Absolutely everything. Let's dissect that a little. So they lost 700 men, we lost 5,000. They lost 12 guns, we lost 100. They lost 22 armor, we lost 147. My goodness. So most of their losses were Stug 3s. And then you can toss in some PZ4s. We lost uh, some Panther Ds though too. They had 104 Tigers. Holy crap. They had 104 Tiger tanks. We had 31 KV-1s, and they had 100 Tigers. No wonder the results went this way. We lost almost our entire complement to KV-1Ss. Almost the entire complement. Wow. Okay, so looking at the ground combat here, 84 of their Tigers were involved. The Tigers alone destroyed 23 with AP hits. Damage to further 17. With HE hits, they destroyed 59 units. The Panther Ds actually almost, in some senses, had a better result here. Had 16 kills with AP hits. Wow. That's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. Let me look at those ground losses too, I wanted to see. Yeah, not many of them are from retreating. That's good. Okay. So I, I kind of built that up as it's probably going to be a pretty big fight. And we went after the big dog there with that one. Um, did not work out for us, but boy, had to try. So I think the question is now, do we try to hit the Wiccan SS Panzer Grenadier Division? Since it's so much further down the line, maybe we can catch them out after the Gross Deutschland Panzer Grenadier Division has already been utilized. I don't know if that'll work, though. We don't have too much of a numerical advantage here. So you're looking at 38, 42 versus their 26. So we don't even have 2 to 1 odds if we did that as is today. And looking at it, we can move some things around, but I don't know how much better we're going to get everything. At best, we could swap out a 1 for a 3 there. 1 for a 3. I don't think we're going to. I think what we'll do is we'll continue trying to hit them where they are, just much, much weaker. So we're going to leave this entire segment to the front as is, and that includes keeping a lot of these units on reserve. Um, to be ready to try to jump into a fight if needed. Just set them to reserve two. And kind of want to take out the tank core and bring in some infantry there. We're going to leave it. I'm going to attack with these guys to the west. Oh, they brought in quite a bit again. They did not hold, though. They did not hold. So that was successful. Let's then take these guys west. Certainly this section of the front is where they have been the strongest across the entire front line. Then I think we can take all three of these stacks and see if we can try to break through there. And we did. Good. Good. Here we'll keep pushing. Another victory. All right, here we're going to push. That was successful. This rifle division I'm going to bring forward. I'm going to have them attack. Good, good. All right, back here, this rifle core. Hmm. 
think, I don't know, I don't think they were part of one of the armies I was moving south. I don't think they were. So given that, this 51st Army... Let's go after this 19th Panzer, I think. And then we'll take this Rifle Division forward. And we'll get ready then to attack them in the coming turns. You're also part of that same army. Let's build you up there. Actually, we got an element of the 58th there. Going to take you back there. 58th is going to come south here. We're going to bring in there, so then we have just all one army, all the 51st. Good stuff. That's good stuff. Back here, we've got another element to the 51st. I think here I'm just going to push forward. Take these two stacks as well. Here I'm going to push just a little south. So they retreat it. And we'll try again. Nope, we can't. This artillery we're going to bring up here to reserve. Oh boy. This six guards army is everywhere. I need to get these guys north. I need to get them north. And you know, actually, they can help out with this entire block here. So let's bring them there. And then this rifle... Or no, this cavalry corps is what this is. Let's bring them up here as well. Okay, so that left a bit of a hole here, but we're going to be able to fill that easily enough. This is also part of that six guards. I don't have enough to actually move them this turn, so I have to try to remember to do that in a future turn, or I can try to reassign them here real quick. Let's just see if that's feasible. Yeah, so let's just put them in the 51st Army or the 58th is the question. Let's do the 51st. I'm going to take you and also put you in the 51st. There we go. So we have these two blocks of the 51st Army. They're also part of the 51st Army. My goodness. You'll start protecting kind of that southern flank here. And then for depot... Yeah, we haven't gotten depots up to the front here yet, so I'm just going to move you further forward. This stack is supposed to be heading south. You're supposed to be heading south. Perhaps have been a little too committed north here. So I might have to have... I think the 9th Army is going to continue going full on south. The 46th Army, we're going to try to... Hold this section of the front. So they're part of the 46 army as well. Where else do we have them? There we go. And 46 army. Okay. So let's take you and attack south here. Ooh, Panzer Division was committed. That's not good. So they held. Um, but we'll let these guys just kind of be that wall. We'll actually probably let them start digging in. And honestly, we'll just try to hold this line a little. But I'm going to keep moving all of these men south. Because I really want to connect here. And then push northwest is my objective. Not to push west, but to first connect from the south and then push northwest. So we'll do every effort possible to try to achieve that. 57th Army here. Okay, yes, yeah, so you're 
you're kind of sticking around in this area, so I can take you up here. You're also part of the 57th Army. You can go there. There we go. Route at them. That feels good. Where else do we have the 57th Army? There we go. Take that HQ there. You're all part of the 18th Army. Let's have you start building out this front line. There we go. Oh, they should be on refit. They should not be that far forward. Yeah, some of these are maybe getting a little too aggressive. We'll take them there. So that's the 18th Army. Oh, no, there's more. There's more. Rifle Division here. You're part of the 18th Army too. Take you north there. And go forward there. Okay. I think one more. No. That's good. So 18th Army has this segment of the front. What's the next army we have here? The 65th. So let's have the 65th just deploy south of the 18th Army. So I'm going to bring... This HQ up here is a bit of a marker. And then we can start taking these guys forward here. Yeah, take the, uh, yeah, that rifle division up here. 65th Army. All right, this is working very nicely. Very happy with how this is going. And the last one for the 65th Army. We're going to have them come down there. And now we can push. Nope. There we go. They retreat it. Now what did we have here? This is part of the 28th Army. So 28th Army will be next. There's that HQ back here. So set the 28th Army HQ here as a marker. And then we'll start bringing in 28th Army. Excellent stuff. They, uh, they need to go and refit here. 28th Army. Kind of the same story there. 28th Army saw a lot of action, is what I'm getting out of this. Some cavalry corps there, too. So we're probably going to set a fair number of these on refit or kind of behind the lines here. We'll bring them up here. That's good. These guys push here. I think we can. Alright, good. So we got that airbase depot too. I have a bit of a problem here with my defensive value. Can take them back. So I might have to mix in units from the next army here. So this is the 9th army. Let's bring them south here. And what's the strongest? We've got probably this rifle corps. I don't have enough movement points to get there, though. Okay, what about this rifle division, though? They can get there. Let's bring them up. These are part of the 9th Army, too. They can come forward. And... 
that rifle division is they're both unready. Unready. My goodness. This is crazy. Rifle core doesn't have enough. I'm just gonna bring the rifle core there and set them to reserve. And then this rifle division will come up here. There we go. Now we're cooking. They can also well they can go to refit apparently. All of these guys can go to refit. Unbelievable the situation we have there. But they they held, right? They they didn't allow them to counterattack south and impact our Stilino offensive or break through to Rostov, so they did their job. So I mean this mass here is hopefully going to distract a lot of them as they try to figure out how they try to prevent us from just rushing these two objectives um, because they were probably anticipating us taking a more direct path from Stellino due west which we're not doing um, and instead we're going a bit around now we've got a couple more hexes here but we're getting really close to being able to connect this rail line that runs kind of north northeast from the Crimea to Stellino. And once we get that, that's going to be very helpful for our logistics because right now we're probably getting a lot of supplies coming in from these um, ports that we have here. Yes, yeah, so you see all of these guys were getting their supplies from this port, probably a depot there too. So, okay. But now what I'm going to do is be a little little bit more forward here with some of these units. We'll take... No, we're going to leave them, actually. We're going to leave that just as it is. That's fine. There's no wrong, nothing wrong there. So I'm still going to be a little short between the Ninth Army and these forces here. Hopefully, once these guys start to actually get refit and back to a combat fighting situation, Hopefully, I can spread these instead of just being three hexes per army, more so to four or five hexes per army. And that should make all the world of difference than in connecting up with these forces. So that'll be the plan here. And actually looking at it, I think in some of these areas, I might actually attack. I'm not going to move these guys because they really are just kind of like the line of defense from them coming south into the Crimea. But right here, I think I'm going to take advantage of the situation and try to press against these security forces. There was an infantry division committed to attack, two of them actually, but we still managed to break through. We just really kind of had overwhelming odds against them. So hopefully that puts them on the back foot a little. We're not going to try a similar situation up here. Um, yeah. Instead, I'm going to set that rifle division to reserve, though, in case they do try to counterattack here. And oh my goodness, I might actually bring up that airborne division, too. Yeah, there we go. That's more than enough. And then what I can do is the rifle division, right? Now I'm actually going to move them back. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Okay. So we're successful there. It's very, very tempting to take that rifle core and move them up. And you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to attack. Okay. So they retreated. And one of the reasons I did that is I'm going to take this rifle brigade. I'm going to bring them up there. Um, we're going to have to take a look at the armies and all of that down here in a minute, but I think what we'll probably end up doing is like the 28th, the 9th army, all of these. I'm going to start assigning a lot of these guys to them. So here, let's start doing some of that work. It's like you can go to the 9th Army. Down here, you can both go to the 9th Army too. That should all help quite a bit. Same for you. And the 
the rest of you, though, I actually want to have coming towards Odessa. So let's move you here. This stack can go there. Yeah, Odessa is more of the priority there. And the rest of this we're going to hold. Um, I think we're okay over here. The longer that I can get time to dig in this line here, the better the situation will be. So we're going to keep doing that. And now how do we attack Odessa? So right now, they have 76 defensive value. Got a whole bunch of armor around the city. What I'm going to do is bring down this mechanized core, I think. Okay. And... Let's see here what we can assign. Let's do this heavy tank regiment. Heavy tank regiment. We won't do any anti-tank with them. This rifle brigade. Well, brigade we're not going to attach anything to. What about this tank corps? Let's assign to them this separate tank battalion. And... Yeah, we're going to leave it at that. These guys get the other separate tank battalion. Which then means we don't have anything left for the third tank corps. But these guys... Let's... Hmm, okay, I'm going to have to leave that. Let's attack Odessa. Let's just see how that would go for us, huh? Should we? I think we should. Let's also bring in these mechanized units to attack with us. So we're going to take all of these and we're going to attack Odessa. We're also going to turn ground support on in case there is any. This is a big battle, guys. Let's see how this goes. Route it. Look at that. We just took Odessa, which now means I'm going to take these tank cores, I'm going to bring them back out to get that defensive perimeter back. That rifle brigade, I'll move up here, because now our interest is just to kind of spread out a little bit the uh, defensive perimeter. But we have taken Odessa, my friends. That's, that's great. That's great. So now we start to get into a bit of the end of turn logistics stuff. Um, so let's take a look at where we have our rail repair guys. So this guy can finally finish off the connection to Sevastopol. So that's done. And I'm going to take him up here. He's, he's out of rail repair. Where do I have to go from here? That was it. Okay, there we go. So the next turn we'll also have that port. And then pretty much all of the Crimea is all taken care of. Up here we have our other rail repair. So we're going to take him and start moving north here. So that's, that's just great news now. And then as we look to push back these guys, right, then we can look at continuing on um, getting this north-south line connected. What I'm actually going to do, though, is I'm actually going to take him over here to this port and have him work this way. Then he can come down and connect. But then next turn, he's within range of repairing all of these rail lines. 
next turn, we're not going to have all of this stuff cleared out. So it's not... He's going to just sit there waiting for another turn. So we're just going to preemptively move him over here. So there's that. Turn back on the highlight again. So that way my blind self can see where else we have them, as I never remember either. So we got one over here. And up here. I think those are the only other two we had. So let's take a look. Oh, no, three. This guy's already done work. He's already done work. He has not done any work. Not to say he's slacking, he just hasn't done any work. Um, so I think I might have him... So we start to get into enemy territory here. I think I'm going to take this HQ unit, move it off temporarily, take him over here, have him repair that hex, and he can work his way down south here, which then gets all of those units connected. And then I'm going to bring him this direction to deal with this just hot mess that we've got going on. So I'll move him this way. Then bring the HQ unit back. There we go. Yeah, these guys have already done their work. All right. Um, not gonna do anything with reserve units this turn. Don't really have too much to speak for. Not gonna build anything. Really, I want as many of my replacement men as possible going towards the front line towards all of those unready and refit units we have, particularly in the southern half of our front. Because if, if we had those additional, say, six divisions that were ready to go rearing and fighting down there, uh, it would make a pretty big impact in our timetable of how quickly we're going to push on the next strategic objectives. But until they're corrected, those armies are stretched so thin that we're really kind of handicapped. Um, so what we're going to do is just end with the depot assist, and then we'll end the turn. And we'll see what surprises um, the Germans have up their sleeves. Go through all of this air transport. And then we'll see what we have for their logistics phase. Let's take a minute to cycle through as they furiously try to figure out how to uh, retreat all of their supply depots, I'm sure. It's just been astonishing these last couple turns, the number of hexes that we've captured. It is, um, again, it, it gives me many flashbacks to the situation that I feel in the 1941 um, Let's Play series we have going on of just kind of that, all right, I got to retreat again. Nope, no opportunity to attack this turn. I got to retreat again. It's I, I sympathize for the AI and the decisions they're having to make, but I what I really will say is that in the southern half of the front, I've been very impressed in how they've built a couple pockets of resistance, specifically um, in between uh, Stalino and Kursk. There are some areas there where we've really had some trouble. There have also been areas between Smolensk and Aryol where we just haven't really had any progress. It's also worth noting that they've stopped us towards Minsk. Now, we haven't put any serious resources towards Minsk, but the AI deserves credit for the fact that in about three or four spots along the front line, they've stopped us in our tracks, right? So, I mean, it, that, is, that is something to call out because it, feel, it can feel emotionally a lot right now. Like, we're just beating up on the AI and, you know, yes, the Soviet war machine right now feels a little unstoppable, but the AI's done a pretty decent job at picking various spots along the front line where they said, no, we're going to hold you. I think, though because of our ability to have pushed through and um, to, to pretty much in the next couple turns here cut off Riga and cut off Army Group North in 1943 compared to the historical like fall or winter of 1944, um, I think at the end of the day, it, it's just going to be too fatal of a blow for the AI to recover from. Um, and, and certainly guarantees our victory. Now the next question is, and this is where I'm trying to, where I'm, where I'm really finding the my own pride in it is just how quickly can I try to get this victory now, right? Can I, 
can I get a victory before 1944 even comes around? Probably not. But we've got another five months here, so it's not completely unrealistic at the pace we're going. Um, so now, now that's, for me, the challenge that I have and what I'm enjoying is just how quickly can I try to... We'll have that decisive victory. Here they, they pushed back one of our rifle brigades south of Peskov. They're also attacking north of Peskov. It looks like another rifle brigade routed. That's fine. Here they are counterattacking that airborne unit we moved up. Um, so this is where we do have that threat of having our lines disconnected. They're actually counterattacking at Leningrad. So I think this is a bit of desperation from them as they're looking at, hey, we got to do something, right? Like... Maybe if we take Leningrad, the ports will help with supply and we can hold out longer. Or maybe they're thinking that, you know, we've reallocated so many forces south to take Peskov that maybe they stand a chance here. But this is now three successive defeats they've had. And they've lost a lot of men doing this. My goodness. But it it's concerning. It's got me sitting here thinking because they're getting close. They're getting within 50 yards of our lines here. Um which is much closer for comfort than I would like. They're taking some heavy losses doing this. From their perspective, though, if I'm them, I, I am kind of looking at it, and I would probably be going, do I have much to lose? I'm about to be completely encircled. Right? It's... And maybe I should just shut up here, because maybe they will break through in one of these. They keep attacking here. My goodness. Yeah, they hit us again. They're held much further out that time, though, but wow. And again, they attacked, and this time our fort was, our fortification level was reduced, right? So that's, that's not insignificant. That really hurts our defensive values there. That was a pretty bold move from the German player. I'm pretty impressed by that. It didn't work out, but at the very least, they're getting a little creative and trying to, trying to find areas where they can have success. I think what will ultimately really hurt them too there, though, is their expenditure of fuel and supplies and ammunition doing all of that. That might come back to really hurt them. All right. Looks like they're just about done with their turn. We'll skip past these resupplies they've got to those entrapped units. Which really has allowed them to hold on much longer than they should have. Oh boy, come on. They're losing a lot of airframes here. I mean, every time they run one of these, they're losing transports. And then our logistics phase before we get to our end of turn summary. I'll, I'll also say that when I, when I started this as my let's play, um, and it, as you guys probably know, is the first video series I've done on YouTube. Um, I I felt pretty good about the scenario I was choosing that I'd probably probably come out on top. Um, and I think I think if I had not changed the difficulty settings um, when I did it might have been a different story, right? Like, if I maybe started at 110 difficulty across the board on everything, maybe I wouldn't be having this much success right now. Maybe that gave me those first couple of turns to really step into it. But um, I was pretty unsure going into this of what would it look like doing a full scenario. This, Guys, this is the, the most enduring or long-lasting scenario I've played of War in the East or of any Gary Grigsby game. So it's... Um, I really was a little uncertain of how things would go, but it's been a, a heck of a joy ride that I have really had fun with. And back to 75, my favorite thing. All right, logistics phase is just about wrapped up. Do a quick save. End of turn summary. What do we got here? 60,000 men lost, right about the same as the previous turn. Net order battle change lost 15,000. Axis lost 75,000. That is just brutal. Um, net change lost 100 guns. They lost 700. 
We net lost 200 armor, they lost 86. And if you think about it, I mean 130 we lost in that one battle against the, what was it, the 20th Panzer Division and the um, Großdeutschland Panzer Grenadier Division. So that, that really, that hurts. That's, that's not feeling so good right now. Um, airframes, net change, positive 90 for us, negative 14 for the Axis. 73 units, low supply, uh, 140 are under strength, and 50 are unready. 50 unready at this stage right now really is quite incredible. It, it's a testament to how quickly we've been moving, how we haven't slowed down anywhere. Um, but we have to get that sorted. So we're going to halt on the building of new units and all that for a little bit until we do. Let's look at the news events here. Um, temporary measures taken to make more men available for the ground forces are ended. So the, and this is for the Axis player, so their manpower multiplier is reduced by 15. So that's probably going to have a pretty big impact to their reinforcements. So the Mighty Eighth continues their bombardment. They do not have enough garrisons in Italy, so the Italian campaign advances due to the lack of enough forces there from the Axis, and Soviet partisans continue their work. A fantastic turn once again. So glad you guys have come along to watch it with me. Um, if you got any questions, comments, please toss them in the comments section below. Thank you so, so much for the support you guys show to the channel, these videos, the advice you give me. Uh, but also to this game and this genre. I mean, this is such a special and niche kind of genre and, and series of titles that it's it really deserves more attention than it probably gets, so thank you for that. And as always, Strategy Gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.